In this SNP, we're going to look at how to create background intelligent transfer jobs with PowerShell in Windows. So the first thing we can do is if we do a get command and search for anything with bits in the title, we'll see that we've got various commands available to us. One of which here is start bits transfer. So if we have a look at that, we can use the start bits transfer command in order to copy a file from a source to a destination. So if I run line nine here, you'll see that it starts a transfer job from our local machine up to a UNC file share. Now that's fine if we've got a fairly small file and we don't mind watching it transfer, but if it's a large file and we don't want to watch it being transferred up to our UNC share, we can use this slash asynchronous switch and we can even use the display name switch in order to give it a name as well. So if we run line 11 here, we'll see it immediately returns and the job runs in the background. So if we want to monitor that job, we can use the get bits transfer commandlet and it tells us we've got that one job there and it's in the state of transferring. So if we pipe that into select star, we'll see all of the details that are available for that object. And we'll see that we've got a bytes total there and bytes transferred. So if we limit that down just to look at those two items, we'll see that's in progress and it's still transferring data. So if we refresh that, we should see that that bytes transferred number is getting bigger and bigger. So with that job running in the background, it doesn't need to be just one file. We can use the add bits file commandlet in order to add files to that job. So if we run line 27 here, we'll see that it quickly adds files to that job. And it will transfer those as well as the ones that are currently transferring. So now that's added everything in the C blobs directory into that job. So if we do our get bits transfer select star again, we'll see that under the file list at the bottom there, we've got a whole bunch of different files all transferring across. So if we look at our get bits transfer and only look at the bytes transferred and the bytes total, we should see that that's still transferring across. But if we refresh that, now we find that it's finished. So if we do our get bits transferred again now, we should see that that job state is transferred. So that job has finished, but it's still sitting there in the background. So the other good thing about a bits job is that it's restartable. So if we do a large transfer job here on line 33, we kick off this large ISO. That will start transferring in the background. So if we do our get bits transfer again, we'll see that there's data transferring in the background. And if we go into our Wi-Fi settings, effectively turn the network off and then run that again we'll see that file is partially transferred and if we keep refreshing this we'll see that that figure never gets any bigger so if we go back to our wi-fi settings again turn them back on again the machine should reconnect to the wi-fi and if we run our get bits transfer line again we should see in a few moments that file will start transferring again so the other way we can do this is on line 37 here, if we pipe the get bits transfer with the name of that transfer job into suspend bits transfer, we can temporarily stop that job halfway through. So now that job is in the state of suspended. So again, if we run the get bits transfer line again and just have a look at the bytes transferred, we'll see that that ends in 368. If I refresh it, it's not transferring. So in order to restart that, we use the get bits transfer command again. But this time we pipe it into resume bits transfer with the asynchronous switch again because we want it to run in the background. So if we go back to our get bits transfer line again in order to look at the amount transferred, we should see that that bytes transferred number is getting bigger and that job is transferring again. So now that that job is finished, if we go to line 45 here and just run a get bits transfer, we'll see that we have two jobs here and they're both in the state of transferred. So they've finished and are no longer transferring. So in order to get rid of those jobs and clean them up, we can use the complete bits transfer commandlet. So if we pipe all of those jobs on line 47 here into complete bits transfer, it should remove all of those jobs for us. So again, if we do a get bits transfer, we have no jobs in the list. 
So this can be useful if we want to do a start bits transfer, set of job copying like on line 49 here. But if we pipe that into the complete bits transfer, it will clean that job up after it's finished. So we kick that off and do a gets bits transfer again. We'll see there's no jobs in the list. And that's been how to create background intelligent transfer jobs with PowerShell. Thanks for watching.